Hello everyone, we are getting started with chapter one. In this chapter, we are going to lay the foundations for the managerial economics class, Econ 5315. In this chapter, we'll talk about managers, profits, and markets. So here are the learning objectives of this chapter. So we'll understand why managerial economics relies on microeconomics and industrial organization to analyze business practices and design business strategies. We'll learn to explain the difference between economic and accounting profit. We'll learn about how separation of ownership and management can lead to a principal agent problem, when the goals of owners and the managers are not aligned, and monitoring the behavior of the managers are, uh, is hard. Okay? Then we'll learn about the differences between price taking and price setting firms. And finally, we'll talk about globalization. So this is chapter one, part one. In this part, we will define managerial economics. Managerial economics applies microeconomic theory to business problems. So economics is divided in two parts, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Managerial economics is based off of microeconomics. It is all about how to use economic analysis to make decisions to achieve firm's goal of profit maximization. So we'll assume companies are there to maximize profits. We will study some non-profit organizations. However, um, our main focus is going to be on profit maximizing firms. Economic theory helps us, helps managers understand real world business problem. So this world is really, um, this word is really important, real word, the phrase, real world, world problems. So in our class, we're going to tackle a lot of real world examples. Economic theory uses simplifying assumptions to, to turn complete, completely complex ideas to simple ideas. Okay, so let's talk about microeconomics. As I said before, we have micro and macro. Microeconomics is a study of behavior of individual consumers, individuals, individual consumers, business firms, and markets that contributes to our understanding of business practices and tactics. Okay, so micro is like the small unit. Okay, so it's like focusing on individual households, consumers, companies, markets. Macroeconomics is a study of the econ economy as a whole, the entire thing. And in this class, we don't cover macro topics such as inflation, unemployment. Of course, those things are really, really important for managers. However, we are focusing on individual firms. So let's talk about business practices or tactics. These are short term behaviors. These are routine or regular business decisions to earn the greatest profit under the current market conditions. So these are all about short term behaviors of firms day to day. We're going to use what we call marginal analysis in studying managerial economics. Marginal analysis means evaluating additional costs and benefits of decisions, business decisions. This is the marginal analysis is the foundation for understanding business decisions. Okay, so let's talk about industrial organization and strategic decisions. Industrial organization is a subfield of microeconomics. So if this is microeconomics, IO is a subfield. This is IO. <laughs> Sorry for that. Subfield of microeconomics focuses on the behavior and structure of firms and industries, their strategic behaviors. Um, there, for instance, Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, two big companies, competitors, and they operate in an oligopolistic market. So, how their behavior, how let's say Pepsi Cola behaves, will have impact on Coca Cola's profits. Okay. This is industrial organization as a foundation for understanding strategic decisions through use of what we call game theory. Okay, so you have studied game theory as an undergraduate. If not, you have taken um, an uh, economics leveling course at the MBA level and you have studied some game theory there. 
Let's talk about strategic decisions. So I'm going one slide back. So remember, we had business practices and tactics, short-term behavior. We also have long-term strategic decisions and uh, long-term actions by firms that have a different impact on firms' outcomes, right? Profit outcomes. So these are business actions, not day-to-day -day routine behavior. These are business actions to alter market conditions and behavior of rivals. For instance, let's say Pepsi-Cola, Coca-Cola. They are deciding on their advertising spending. Okay, one of the biggest, what's a, one of the biggest advertising events in a year in the United States? Super Bowl, right? So Super Bowl commercials cost millions of dollars, right? To a 30 second commercial was around $2 million to get that uh, spot, 30 second commercial. And to produce it, you need to spend money. So once you spend it though, if it's a really powerful commercial, what happens that it impacts our consumer behavior, right? It may actually impact your market share. That's a huge action. So these are strategic decisions or business action taken to alter market conditions, market share, behavior of rivals in ways to increase or protect the firm's strategic uh, profit. Okay, so let's keep something in mind. Caveat, warning. While business practices, right, these are routine day-to-day -day behaviors, are necessity for the goal of profit maximization strategic decisions are right, to change the market structure market conditions behavior of firms are generally optional actions managers can take so you do need to manage your company day to day of uh, this is a necessity you need to survive however engaging in actions to change market conditions behavior of rival firms is optional Okay, so let's talk about economic forces that promote long-term profitability. So these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven factors will impact long-run profitability. Number one is not having many closed substitutes. If you have few closed substitutes, that's an advantage. That means people will have no choice or few choices but to purchase from you so this means you the demand for the good that you're producing has inelastic property we have learned about this in our principles of microeconomics classes strong entry barriers so it's not easy for companies to enter to market and take a share of the pie weak rivalry within the market if there is more competition rivalry the, the market participants will try to keep their prices low. Trying to keep your prices low will actually impact your profits. The fourth one is low market power of input suppliers. So this is basically your workers. Are they unionized? If not, it's an advantage for the company. Uh, if your input suppliers, factors of production, right? Raw materials, this and that. If the suppliers of these raw materials that you use to produce your product have low market power, that means they can't charge any price that one they want, then that is a, another force that will impact your long run profitability. Fifth one, low market power of consumers. So do consumers have market power? For instance, if I go to grocery store, I need to buy milk. Right today I was checking it, it was $4 per gallon. And I have no power, I can't go to cashier and be like, hey, can I get a discount on this? Cashier would look at me, right? What, you don't have market power in the sense that you, I can't negotiate the price of groceries. But it's not only direct negotiation, if there are, for instance, 1,000 grocery stores in my city, lots of competitors, right? Then I would have more, as a consumer more market power because it is basically uh, consumers have lots of options okay number six abundant complementary products so basically what you produce has 
does it have lots of products that go with it right so let's say i'm just giving an example you're a car manufacturer but it your cars only only run with gas uh versus imagine hybrid car or uh, another option electric okay so hybrid right has the most flexibility of course depending on what's going on with the market however if you have a hybrid car that gives the consumers more flexibility uh, complementarity increases so for instance I'm producing an electric car I'm a car manufacturer I'm producing electric car what if there are not enough electric charging stations so there are not many complementary products for supporting your product seventh one limited harmful government intervention this is self-explanatory government is not um, targeting certain industries or uh, limiting your behavior in the market okay so this concludes chapter one part one i'll see you in part two